So I'm really excited to show you how to install this Kohler Vicrel Sterling tub. Come on, Kai, get, go. Go, come on. Lay down, lay down. <laughs> All right. I am really excited to share with you the installation of this great tub by Kohler Sterling. I've gotten a lot of comments from a lot of viewers about recommending this tub because I've really had some real issues with prior brands that I always used to trust and they've made some things that were just not very good. I had cracked tub flanges and then I also had cracked tub surrounds. So I really do think this is the ticket, just taking it out of the box, just looking at it right now, it's actually really is well constructed. And I think it's gonna be one of the easiest shower kits you can install and also get a really luxury, nice look as well. So really excited to share with you. I'm gonna go step by, step by step through the entire process so you can evaluate your own situation and make sure that you put this in efficiently and correctly. But let me just show you the construction of this thing. So this is an acrylic tub. Uh, this is a 32 by 60 inch tub. That's a pretty standard size, but they make them in other sizes as well. You can get a 30 inch if you have a smaller bathroom. Now this bathroom is a five by eight. So I would recommend, I mean, 32 does give you a lot more space in it, but it has a nice, uh, it's gonna be hard to see on film, but it has like a little bit of a friction type of surface on the bottom. It, it's gonna be something that's gonna be easy to clean. It's not gonna be something like, if you ever had a cast iron tub, they used to put this like, kind of a glue strip on it that would always get dirty and very tough to clean. But this is just a rough surface of the, uh, the acrylic so you won't slip in the tub. But as you can see, it's a nice deep tub as well. This is 19 and a half, I believe. 19 inches, so about the same. Um, and so like a real adult can actually take a bath in this thing. A lot of those old tubs that you're probably replacing they just don't have the depth for anything. So, but checking it out, what, what I'm really interested in when I'm looking at a tub is how it's constructed when it comes to the bottom of the flange. So this is pretty good. This is this waffle cone here is what's gonna be embedded into mortar. So the mortar will squeeze into these cavities and lock it in and make a nice solid base. But the overall thickness of this, I would say is good solid eighth inch. Uh, but one of my most critical areas I think you really have to pay attention to is how thick the flange is around the tub. And this is all one piece. So I love the way that's already constructed. I think this is far superior than some of the older other brands that I've used. Uh, just because the thickness of this is really important because um, the stress of installing the plumbing and, you know, you don't want to over tighten something. But having this, what well, this is almost a quarter inch thick. I mean, this is gonna be a pretty durable drain assembly. Yeah, almost three eighths of an inch. So you're in really, uh, the tub flange passes my inspection. Uh, the other thing I always look for is there, is there any support on the flange? And as you can see, they have these brackets on here that there is no movement. So that's really important because some of these tubs don't have any real good support and they're just really, really flimsy. So overall, I mean, this is just one solid constructed piece. There isn't any separate moldings on it like a lot of other tubs have. So I think all in all, this is, you know, you set this in mortar, this is gonna be a really solid installation. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do this process and uh, prevent you from having any issues. All right, so now that the floor level is all down, we have a nice level and flat surface. This preparation is well worth the effort. It's gonna make installing the tub a breeze and very easy to install. So let's just take out these little blockers that we had to keep that floor leveler from getting down into our sub floor here. And then we're gonna dry fit the tub see how well it fits in the space. Just know that you're gonna to have to dry fit this many times before you actually get this set into place. Cause you wanna make sure everything's gonna work correctly before you set it into mortar. Now I do wanna mention, 
we have all these walls taken open, as you can see. So it makes it so much easier when you can get remove all of the walls within your bathroom to set it in an alcove like this. If you have existing uh, drywall or plaster, this can be a lot more challenging. So make sure you check out the video that I have linked down below on how to get a tub into an alcove uh, without um, having to remove the side walls. But I really do feel like most bathroom remodels, I almost don't even want to do them unless I'm going to remove all the drywall and replace them, especially in a five by nine bathroom, because you're really only talking, you know, six sheets of drywall and the time to finish that is not, you know, extraordinary in any means. So, but I understand some people just need to just replace their tubs and that's it. Um, and then you're trying to work with what you have existing, but just know this makes it so much easier to install. So we're just going to dry fit this. The other thing I want to mention is that, uh, if you have the ability to build your own alcove, I wouldn't try to make this like 60 and a half inches versus 60 inches right on the money because it's going to be easier to move. And then you can always, you can just shim, you know, the flange of your tub and a quarter inch on either side isn't going to affect anything because if, even if you did tile, your wall board would overcome the tub flange. Now that depends on what model you are, but this Sterling, um, Kohler tub here, it's a very thin flange, so you'd have no issues. So if you have the ability to make the opening a little bit bigger, it's just gonna make everything a lot easier to install. So let's just go put this in and uh, see what we're gonna be working with here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna look at is how much of a gap I have on either side. Try to even that up. But then also, how straight my back wall is. So you can reference how aligned my back studs are by just looking at the flange. Uh, a lot of times these corner studs end up being out a little bit further, that could be problematic. So you want to address the framing you know, once you evaluate these here, but everything's nice and straight. I got about a quarter inch on either side and let's just go put a level on it. See what that's going to look like. Pretty good. Pretty good. Nothing to it. So yeah, I mean, if you have a level subfloor, it makes all of this so, so much easier. Uh, because now you're not fighting and having to shim things up. But if you had an unlevel subfloor and you didn't go through the trouble of putting that floor leveler down, you want to shim it up, make everything level. Okay, so you want to, whatever it takes to do, you know, you want to shim it up and then you want to mark your studs where your flange is, because this is going to be reference when I go to put my tub into mortar. So when I put my tub into mortar, you know, you're going to want to push this down and, and make it meet those lines. It just gives you a little bit of an extra reference point so that you know what's level. But it's really honestly not necessary that I have the floor leveler down to do this because really all I'm going to be doing is setting it and making sure that it meets the tub. But if you are uh, needing to un undo that unlevelness, you're going to want to make your mortar pretty stiff so that you can actually keep this up. And you want to put some temporary shims underneath the front of the tub uh, so that you don't compress that mortar if you're trying to do it. So it's a lot more challenging when you're trying to deal with an unlevel subfloor. Uh, then, you know, that's why the, the wor the, it's worth doing that floor leveler ahead of time. So that all looks good. And looking at my drain, I have, and I do have to cut out a little bit more. You just wanna make sure you have enough room around your drain. I'm gonna cut out a little bit more of that subfloor because this is a little bit of a, um, we had a 30 inch tub in here before now it's 32. So everything's going to be shifted slightly and keep in mind when you do change out a 30 inch tub and put in a 32, you are going to have to train, change out your trap and your drain assembly so that you can, you know, maneuver it into that new location. So a couple other things before we take this tub out that you want to evaluate is how plumb your walls are because that's gonna be really important for these walls to be sitting incorrectly, especially the back wall. So if you're tilted in too much, 
it can be very problematic when you have this tub sucked all the way to the back of the wall. Now you could shim this entire tub out if you don't want to address the framing. If you're basically, you know, your top of your studs are coming in, you can move this out so that you can make sure that your walls are plumb. But I would really recommend making sure that not only are all your studs all in line with one another, but make sure that they're plumb. That's really important with these tub surrounds. When you do ceramic tub surrounds, you can really fudge a lot of things with extra thin set and be able to overcome things. But when it comes to the tub surround kit, if the back wall is not plumb, it makes all these side panels not sit correctly against the tub. So it's really important to take note of that. The other thing I want to note is that I do have some blocking here on either side. You could also see that there is uh, sufficient support here for my waterproofing I'm gonna have against the tub as well. So make sure that you add additional blocking um, especially around this area, because if you want to put a, a shower curtain rod or maybe you want to do a shower door, it's nice to have blocking all within that area. So now that we have this, oh, the other thing I want to mention is I don't have my faucet in yet. So there's a, that's, it's a lot easier dry fitting and setting your tub without having the faucet in, with, especially without the tub spelt. It just makes it a lot easier. You can do that afterwards um, much more easily and then also make sure that you center everything up with your your drain uh, assembly to make everything look uniform. So we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna put the tub surround in or the um, tub assembly together. That's gonna make it a lot easier for a DIYer because if you don't have a second person, it can be very difficult to put the drain assembly in uh, by yourself. So we'll do that and then we'll set the tub. So setting the tub assembly before you set the tub into mortar makes everything a lot easier, especially if you're doing this by yourself. So we're going to be installing a Kohler uh, cable driven uh, drain assembly. I really love these uh, cable ones because it takes all the messing around with the mechanicals of a traditional drain. I also don't particularly love the pop-up drains because they end up breaking over time. But these cable driven ones are really well built and it basically just has a little drain that will pop up by the use of the cable. So in my mind, this is a much stronger, long lasting drain assembly than a lot of the other ones. But keep in mind, you can pretty much grab whatever drain assembly that is gonna fit on a deep soaking tub. Uh, this cable driven one can really fit all types of different types of sizes. So it's all hard piped. I do think that having uh, the straight up inch and a half inch um, PVC piping is a better way to go. Uh, it's just gonna be something that's gonna be all glued. And you know, you really, you know, whether you're snaking it or whatever, it's just gonna be something that's gonna be a lot longer lasting and easier to, um, well, it's not easier to install, I wouldn't say. The, the slip fitting types definitely have a lot more flexibility when it comes to connecting to existing plumbing. Uh, but this overall, I mean, any plumber is going to recommend this over any of those other type of drain assemblies. So the first thing you want to do is dry fit everything before you apply any plumber's putty or silicone. As I was going to mention, you do need both. You need silicone and plumber's putty for this specific model. And I always do recommend whatever the manufacturer is recommending to do that. Now, a lot of times you'll, you probably see me in the past just using nothing but silicone. It's been something that's worked for me for over decades now. Uh, but if it is specifying plumber's putty, I highly recommend you do what the manufacturer says. But what I love about this too, is that it basically has a nut driver that connects it into the tub. So it's really easy to tighten this down. You're not needing a special tub drain tool. Basically you just need a ratchet and that's it. So this also has the traditional rubber gasket on the back. So let's install this. Just if you're doing this by yourself, an extension will make this a lot easier. Slide on here. So this just has like a little locking sleeve on here. this bottom piece first 
So really, you just need, you know, this is flexible, so this gives you a lot of ability to move this around. So you just don't want to go out past the flange or you're going to run into an issue with the floor. So on this tub, we're going to go about three and a quarter inches. So we'll cut a piece of pipe. I do highly recommend you use a chop saw for this so you can be accurate. So we got 12 and a quarter. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Now, if you did have issues with room, you could do it this way. So this is another alternative. Now I'm not gonna do it this way because I don't need to. But you could have your fitting sit this way if you don't have the height in your floor. So um, now you're gonna have to obviously have a, another elbow that points down. But that would be, you know I mean? This just gives you more alternatives because you can bring it out like this and extend this as far as you need it and then drop down wherever you need to. So I don't, I mean, I can't think of a situation where I've had to do that, but I'm just saying that that's a, that's a method that you could use. So we're just gonna do the traditional method and then we'll, once we get the tub in, we'll connect this to our existing piping. But uh, with a short piece like this, I mean, once you set it into these fittings, it's gonna be pitched the proper direction. If you have a lot longer tub, you wanna make sure that this is kinda uh, making sure that this is pitched towards the, the drain. Plumber's putty. Um, now, Kohler is recommending plumber's putty, so that's why I'm going to do it. But you basically want to have a good, solid quarter inch, three eighths inch thick bead of this. Because it's going to squeeze out a whole bunch that you don't need. So just make a nice, you know, you can see how much that is. That's a lot of this is going to squeeze out and then you can be able to clean it up. But plumber's putty is pretty nice when it comes to cleanup. It's really easy to remove. And then we're also gonna be using silicone on our actual rubber gasket to the bottom of the tub as well. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of silicone between the gasket. And then also a little bit between this and the tub. So I got my plumber's putty on here. See that squeeze right out. That's what you don't want. Don't worry. <clears throat> don't worry if that happens. You just gotta get this back in there. That's what happens if you over tighten it. It just wants to squeeze out the rubber gaskets. So just stuff it back in there because there's, you know, it, there, you've got plenty of silicone around there. It's just you over tightened it too much. So you're right at the point where you're squeezing it out. So that's tight enough. And you can just wipe that off and you should be good to go. Okay, so PVC primer. Careful with this stuff. This stuff loves to stain your clothes. It'll stain the tub too, so don't get this on the tub. Oh, I, I spilled it once all over my leg because I, um, I think I, I had both of them taped like this and then I was trying to get the last bit of the glue out of the one side and it fell, you know, completely saturated my leg and uh, it started burning. It, it, this stuff will burn your skin. So purple primer is kind of awful stuff to tell you the truth, <laughs> but it definitely... Does what it says, it primes the fitting. 
So we've got that all primed and you can immediately just glue it. So what I would do is I'll just glue both of these, kind of do it all at the same time in a way. Okay, so then we got that one. That one. A little bit more for good measure. Just hold it for a couple seconds. Okay, so that, again, we'll connect this to the actual um, drain assembly afterwards, and I'll explain to you. <laughs> Having access to this, either whether it's behind or down below. Down below obviously makes it the easiest way to connect, um, but we'll show you how to connect this to ABS. So I actually forgot to seal this one. The overflow is just as important as the actual top drain. So you wanna get a little bit of silicone in between the rubber gasket and the uh, tub here. So that's all nice and sealed around here. Again, if you would have installed this with the silicone before, it would have made it a little bit easier, but it will work. Okay, so we're gonna cut out just a little bit more just to make sure that we don't have a problem with the drain assembly. Okay. Okay, just wanna make sure that that drain assembly is gonna fit well. You can. Reference our lines, make sure that it's sitting where you wanted it to. Now we can go ahead and mix our mortar and get that ready. All right, so when it comes to setting it in the mortar, biggest key is just making sure you get a mortar mix of something that doesn't have any aggregate in it. And the aggregate, if you have any type of real concrete mix, it's gonna make it tough to level out the tub. So I would recommend just a regular mortar mix. This is a four to one sand mix, but with any type of type S mortar, any type of mortar will work. So we're gonna just use one bag. Uh, primarily the only reason I need one bag is because I already have a level subfloor. I can make this a pretty loose mixture. This is just literally for support. Uh, if, I was un if it was unlevel, you wanna make it fairly thick, like a brick mortar consistency so that you have the ability to overcome the unlevelness. And you might wanna get a second bag if you're trying to unco you know, uh, overcome unlevelness. All right, so we have floor leveler down, so we don't have to be concerned about putting plastic or any type of felt down. But if you had this directly over plywood, it would be a good idea to isolate uh, the actual plywood floor from the mortar. But we're just gonna basically place this right down the belly of the tub. And again, we're not really trying to level anything out. We're just trying to support the actual tub. So about one to two inches all the way along the belly of the tub is sufficient. Something like that. Go ahead and And then you can just go ahead and since this is not happening to be leveled, we could just kind of push this into the mortar. And then we can make indicator lines here. So that all looks good. We're about even on either side. Just check the levelness. Looks pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good that way. Okay, back is there. 
this is kind of nice this is awesome so you don't have to drill through the flange like a lot of other tubs so these are just a little clamp or a little clip that, that kind of hooks onto the bottom so they give you four of them you do two on the on the right side and two on the left and then you have these plastic clips to hold the tub against the wall so you want to make sure that you shim this if needed like we do here on the side walls these things just kind of slip under the tub and you can slide them over and again shim them little plastic clips tell you what pretty straightforward very very easy no no concerns about cracking the tub flange and it's definitely a nice solid base now okay so this drain has a little set screw that allows you to adjust the height so this just kind of slides into the drain and then that'll, this will adjust the height of how much it needs to pop up. And then this guy just has a little set screw on it. Let's see. All right, so this is very, very close to where I need it, but it's gonna be very, very difficult. I mean, there's a little bit of flex in my line here I'm just gonna make it easier on myself and just change out the trap itself. Now this is obviously PVC, this is ABS. So we're gonna to have to use some transition cement to change it, but let's go ahead and cut this trap off. There we go. Okay, so that should work. So we're gonna prime all our fittings first. And then what we're gonna do to get to the ABS is use some green transition, uh, transition cement that will go from ABS to PVC. We'll go ahead and get our green transition cement on here. I, know I kind of glue this all together at the same time here in a way. Hold that for a couple seconds. Okay. So let's do it. Let that dry for an hour and then you can test it, but still gonna get the faucet on, so we've got plenty of time to do it. But yeah, so it really makes it easy when you're doing it underneath the floor like this. Now, obviously, uh, if you're on a second story of a regular home, you're not gonna have this luxury. Uh, so you're going to have to do this from the, the back access of the tub. So it definitely gets more challenging on that. So I definitely recommend that if you don't have access like this, you're going to have to charge a little bit more money for the time it takes to be able to do it behind the tub. All right, so we're going to get our faucet prepped. And what we're going to be installing is a cooler universal valve. Now, one thing, if you really want to make things easy on yourself, is to order a valve ahead of time that already has the PEX adapters if you're using PEX B. Uh, they do have PEX A as well, but being able to just connect my water supplies directly here without having to add any additional fitting 
is awesome. And what we're really gonna do that's gonna make this even easier is using these new Pro Press crimp rings that is gonna eliminate me from having to do any soldering. Because one thing about uh, the faucets, for at least the Kohler anyways, you need to have copper for the tub spout so that you don't have any backflow issues. And the other great thing is that you can put the whole valve together and you don't have to be concerned about uh, heating anything up and ruining anything on any of these valves. Because all, this, all these rubber components, if you try to heat this with it, or even the um, shutoff valves, you have to take these out so that you don't heat, overheat them when you're heating onto your existing valve. So a lot of benefits to the Pro Press. I'm really excited to use it. So the first thing is, you have to evaluate what you're installing this valve on. Typically, when it's just a regular tub, tile surround, you just, keep, you just keep these little flanges on, and then this is the variance that you wanna have your finished wall between this back end and the front end. So you have a good one inch reveal here that you can have a fluctuation on finished wall. But since we're doing a thin walled, doing a tub surround kit, you wanna cut these flanges off. Easily just snap off. And so what this is gonna do is rest right up against the tub surround. So this is gonna be kind of act as like a, a base for it. And then your, your, uh, your thin wall will rest right up against here. So this just clips right onto your housing. So this is gonna be the depth that you need it. So just come over here, check it out. So this is my, my side panel of the cooler kit. And they do have an indication on here of where they would want you to put the valve. So they have a valve center point here and they, they bring that line all the way down for your tub spout. Now you can, you can adjust the height of your tub spout to what you want, but I'm just gonna go with about four and a half inches off the tub deck. And I think that'll work pretty nicely. So we'll go right in the middle of that one. And then our center line for our valve is here. So let's just measure up what we're gonna want from the center of our tub spout to the center of our valve. And I think 18 inches is gonna work out perfectly right here. We'll be right in the center of this like kind of fake tile that they have on here. So they have this pretty well laid out. Obviously you can see they have some support uh, for blocking for uh, grab bars. So you, you wanna make sure you don't interfere with that. But really nice to have that center location so you know what you're working with. But the ultimate thing is, is that we're gonna be just sticking this straight up against the back wall of, you know, this is basically gonna be resting right against your, your thin wall. So measuring from where your studs are gonna be, you wanna be back inch and three quarter. So we're gonna make sure that we have some blocking inch and three quarter behind the studs so that we can mount this and then this meets nice and flush with the background. Now, this is the colder unit. If you use other, some other kind of tub surround kit, it's gonna vary and be different. Uh, but yeah, makes it really simple. Okay, so we're gonna take this off right now and prep this. And so now that we know that what we want, we're gonna go ahead and thread on our Pro Press crimps and we're gonna make it 18 inches from the center to our tub spout so that we're in the right spot. Go around your threaded fittings, four to five revolutions, try to keep it flat and then go clockwise with it so that when you thread on your fitting, it kind of threads the Teflon tape with it. Now the tub or the um, shower head, now you can make that PEX if you wanted to. So you can use PEX on the shower head, but we're gonna just do everything copper because I, I kind of like the rigidity of having the entire thing that way. So there really isn't an up or down on this valve. These are, these are stops, integral stops. So when you twist them this way inward, That'll turn the water on and that turns the water off. This is really important in areas that you don't have a ability to have a shutoff valve because if there was ever a leak or something on this valve, you want to be able to just isolate this and not have to shut off your whole home or shut off the whole bathroom area. But we're going to use a little bit of pipe sealant as well. And just that's just going to ensure a good seal. So just put a little bit of that around on top of the Teflon tape.
want to sand your fittings. You also want to make sure you do deburr anything. So you can just take your utility knife. Just make sure there isn't any sharp burrs on here for the fittings. Okay, then you want to set that on here. Put a mark just, just to make sure that you have this slit all the way on. So just make a mark so you have an indication of that. So this is really exciting. This is a serious piece of equipment here, I have to say. So this gives you some, some real leverage to be able to make this fitting crimp properly. Nice. Since this is threaded, you can always just thread that a little bit more until that tub spout's where you need it. There you go. You can see how the, it crimps it, kind of makes it like a little octagon shape. So it really is that easy. That's pretty awesome. Now, I don't need this much hanging out of my tub spout, so I'm just going to cut a little bit of this off. 18 inches to the center there. So we've got pecs coming down from the ceiling on this one. So we'll move that out of the way for now. We'll make that connection after we get the block set. Okay, so off the top deck, we're gonna go 22 and a half to the center of our valve, approximately two inches behind, which is right to the back of a normal two by four stud. Sixteen, so twenty-two and a half is right about there. Shower head, normally off of that, I'm usually about eighty-four inches off the bottom of your tub. You just want to make sure that you have enough room above that tub surround for that shower arm to come out. Let me see what that shower. So the tub walls are about fifty-seven. So you're, they're gonna come to a right about here. So just as long as you're above that, but I would just make sure that you have enough room depending on how tall you are. So I'm actually just gonna leave it up here at the uh, where my other one was, which is about 65 inches off of my tub deck. And that would be off the bottom of the tub around 83 and a half inches, 39 and 3 eighths. So this is awesome. No more soldering your plumbing parts anymore. These are called uh, Pro Press fittings. It essentially just works like a regular PEX crimper. Slide it into the device here. So now you got it in the, the jaws of life here. And you just crimp it now. Obviously these handles adjust so you can have more leverage. But that's all it is, it's just a crimp and you're good to go. So that is beautiful. No more soldering in really bad places, not having to worry about smoke alarms going off. Now I can just crimp it and be done. Because a lot of shower faucets, especially when you have a tub spout, require this section to be copper. So you're always, you're always doing a little bit of soldering, even if you do connect with PEX, you still have to do copper in the bottom. So this is gonna eliminate a lot of trouble for me. And uh, so thanks I Cripper. this is definitely the way to go. Nice. That's all there is to it. Okay, so again, you just wanna measure to make sure this is in the right spot. But 22 and a half, 
16. Okay, before you anchor this, just make sure that we got this blocking where we need it. Our shark bite off of here. So this little kit is pretty awesome by iCrimp. So you got three quarter and half inch crimping tools. This really allows you to get into small spaces very easily. And it also has a little cutter. And then if you screw up and you wanna remove one of these fittings, you can use one of this, uh, basically it cuts the crimp ring off so that you can reuse the pipe. So definitely a nice little handy kit. It's got everything in here that you can need. And again, it goes to the three quarter as well. But I think one of the biggest things about it is that you can get into tight spaces very easily. And I like to use these pro crimp rings. So these guys have little red spacers on them. And that just kind of helps hold the pecs at the right location. it back to open it up okay so you want to double check things with the no go go gauge just slide it on there Tell you what, plumbing got so much easier with eye crimp. Thanks so much. This is definitely the way to go. I got my pro press crimps and now I got my pecs. No soldering involved. Very, very simple. So just double check your fittings too. You wanna to make sure that the no go go gauge either fits over or it doesn't. You can check both ways. So yeah, looks good. Everything's crimp. Now we'll just get the water on and check everything. We're gonna put a cap on here too to make sure that that doesn't come out of there. Okay, so we'll get our guard back on here. So this guy just has a cold indication on here. Yeah, cold. So cold's on the right. This just slides in. And you just thread this into the, the housing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the water on. Right now, these little tabs are pointed towards the supplies. So you just wanna turn it towards the valve. So that indicates that it's on. And then, Fill everything up and it'll it'll basically back everything up make sure nothing's leaking good good so now we can go ahead and test our tub no. okay so just check your plumbing when it's running now I'm gonna fill up the tub and make sure the overflow is fine but you wanna make sure that you check it before you go filling the entire tub up, make sure nothing's leaking, everything's good. Everything's flowing just well. So, yeah. All right, so it's super important to fill up your tub, fully test this thing, make sure there isn't any leaks because the overflow is just as important as the main drain. Um, I've definitely gotten caught in the past where there was a small leak from the overflow and it took months and months till later for the client to, to find out. And by then there was already kind of drywall damage and mold that I had to repair. So definitely check it out at this point because then at least you know that it was definitely done well. So make sure you fill this up, let the overflow completely fill up and test it. So I'm gonna go around back and check it here. Okay, so just make sure that everything is leak free from around here. 
And then you can also just feel under here to make sure that nothing's leaking. But make sure that that overflow is filling and that everything is leak free. So this is gonna be the easiest part of the project installing these tub walls. And what's really awesome is that if you ever plan to put some grab bars in, they already have blocking placed on the back here. I think that is an awesome feature. I mean, it's just one by material, but having it all set and I don't have to worry about it is gonna really make this simplified. So whether you're gonna be installing grab bars or not, it's nice to have blocking uh, where it is. But you can see on the back of this too, so it comes in four panels. So two on the back, so this is the back wall set here, and it'll have a little shelf with it too, which is really awesome. Um, but it's pretty sturdy stuff. You know, it's about the same consistency as the tub surround, a little bit thicker where the tile layer is. I mean, it's probably a good three eighths of an inch thick on the back. So it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's a durable product and this is just made to go direct the studs. So there's no backer board or anything that's needed on the back wall. This will just slide right in. And what's even better, is that they have these tabs on here that you slide into and you don't need to do any type of caulking, which caulking is always a maintenance issue. So to get away from that is really gonna be great. So let's go ahead and install this and uh, I'll just show you how quick and easy it is. All right, so this back wall, now you should have done this before you actually installed the tub, but this is where having your back wall plumb is really, really important because you set the back wall in uh, if it's veered out in any way, it's going to make the, the side panels angle down incorrectly and then you won't be able to lock in your sides. So it's really imperative that your back wall is plumb. So be sure you address that before you even install the tub to make sure it's, it's, it's more important on the back wall than anything. If your side walls are a little bit out, you know, things can be shimmed and, and worked with, but the back wall is imperative to have straight. So just to show you here, this has these little tabs here. There's little tabs, so these are only, what, about an, a quarter inch thick. And then inside the tub, there's some little grooves here that that's going to slide into. So this kind of indicates where it needs to set, and then it'll make sure that the panel's in the right position. So there's two panels here. Uh, obviously, the tabs are going to be the ones that go into the tub, and this is going to be the top section of the wall. All right, so let's go ahead and set these panels in. Seriously gonna be the simplest tub surround you ever installed. So you just gotta line them up <laughs> and that's really all there is to it. You just wanna make sure that the bottom gap, you wanna have this to be about a 16th inch, or I'm sorry, a 32nd inch groove here. So make sure that this is completely even all the way across and everything's set all the way in. So this is awesome, there's no caulking involved. That is it. Important note here is making sure these walls are plumb. So put a level on the edges here, make sure that it's, it's plumb. And then you, if, if you needed to, if your wall was leaning in that way, you can shim this out with a couple of shims, but just pay attention that that's level and it is. So then all we have to do is screw this into place. Before you really totally anchor that, I want to make sure that this is plumb too. So this actually does need to be shimmed a little bit out on this side. So if this needs shimmed, just put a shim here. But you just want to make sure that this stays plumb. So the next one has a little groove. This little flange here will slide into this panel. So that you can see that this slides into that back panel here. Okay, so then again, you wanna make sure that this stays plumb. So this will move around a little bit, but that's not a big deal because once you slide the side walls in, that's gonna lock everything into place. This is pretty cool though. It's got a nice little shelf here. That's definitely gonna come in handy. And uh, yeah, provide plenty of storage. The side panel 
again, you got some grooves right here. One important note, you want to make sure that this little rubber gasket is in here. The little rubber foot, and this basically seals against the tub. So then if any water gets in between this, the 30 second inch crack here, it's not going to leak outside of the tub. So that's really important to make sure this is here. And then as you can see again, I've got some blocking for grab bars, which is awesome. And then what you have on the side here is basically these little tabs here will lock into these little, ta these little tabs here. So there's some tabs on the side here that that will slide into. So you simply set this into the groove. I'm gonna make sure that that sits down onto the tub tightly. One minor issue here. So one problem here is you can see that this gap here is a little bit bigger. So I must not have this wall completely plumb and that's what's causing the gap here, but it's tight down there. So I just need to shim out this wall a little bit. But the other thing you wanna pay attention to is just how this sits right here and making sure that this is nice and tight to the tub deck, which it is. That means that this guy needs to be shimmed out more. So that takes care of that. And now it's all straight all the way down. Okay, so then you wanna keep these shimmed out to make sure that this is plumb. That level is plumb. Now this had a, you know, this, this opening was 60 and a half. So it is gonna be, you know, you're gonna to have to shim this out a quarter inch. Okay, so it's just gonna be easier to put some quarter inch plywood behind this. Okay, so that's all there's to it. So the plumbing wall, this is the one that might be a little bit stressful for you. Um, <clears throat> basically you need a four inch hole saw and uh, basically another one inch hole saw. So these are important so that you have the right dimensions. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go off the center line of our actual uh, point here on the panel wall. And if I need to adjust this, I will. Uh, I'd rather have it centered on the panel and then adjust my, you know, basically adhere my valve into place. Now I did measure off of this. This was 16 inch center. That is what that should be on here. But we're going to go by what the tub surround dictates versus what we have existing here. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead. First thing we need to figure out is the height. So we have right to the center here, right off the tub deck, we have 22 inches. So off of here, this is gonna be setting into the tub to 22 inches the center. Okay, so we're gonna put a little pilot bit there. All right, so I've got a little six lathe inch bit here. I'm just gonna drill right at that 22 inch. Is that what that was? Let me double check. Yeah, 22 inches, 22 inches. And then looking at our tub spout, we have four and a quarter. So this has integral stops. So on a normal valve, you could just do the four inch hole and be done with it. But I'm gonna have to do a couple side pieces to be able to get to my valves here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get this kind of outlined here. So you, Okay, so that's my marker here. And right off the center of this, I'm gonna cut my one inch holes so that I have room to get to my valves. Now keep in mind, you do have a lot of wiggle room here. You know, the excussion plate's really gonna cover a lot of this, so it's not perfect. You'll be able to adjust cut or 
you know, be able to cover this. And then we'll go ahead and cut our four inch hole. Okay. Just use a one inch hole for the tub spout. So I am a little bit off. We're just gonna loosen the screws on here, get this into place. Kind of make sure it fits. I don't know how you're supposed to slide it up and then down onto that. I mean, it's gotta be slid up pretty. It's gonna take. It's one nice thing about PEX on something like this. This is gonna allow me to get the flexibility to move this whole valve up a little bit. Yep, that's what it's gonna take. So that's on a normal hard piped, like if you had copper everywhere, you're not gonna have that flexibility. Definitely gonna be difficult. So I did want to mention that there is an alternative method here that would make it a little bit easier to install this panel and that is just to use a male adapter with a stub out, solder those together that you so you could create your own little stub out that you'll be able to thread into a drop ear elbow uh, for that tub spout. This is really going to make it a lot easier so you don't have to deal with that stub out for the tub spout. Alright, so in order to slide this in. This needs to be able to be moved up slightly so you can get the walls in. And I wanna have something that's not gonna allow this valve to go this way. Now, if I just put anchors right into here, this isn't bad. I mean, I would accept that if you had to, but one of the easiest ways to fix this issue is just to put a, a flexible strap on here so that I can move it and then it's also gonna keep it tucked to the wall. So that's gonna, you can see that's gonna hold that into place, but it's gonna allow me to move this up and down as well. Make sure that this little rubber gasket thing is in on the corner. This is what's gonna keep that water from dripping out in front of the tub. There we go. Just needs to be slid up high enough to be able to there we go. Okay, so we got the same issue here. This gap here is a little bit wider up here. This is all nice and even, but I just have just a slight. It's not even that big of a deal. But, um, you know, you want to make sure that you get that completely even. So we're going to take this back out and shim this panel out a little bit. here this is gonna be shimmed out because of the wall needs shimmed out so you can see how this panel moves just slightly here you want to make sure this is tucked all the way back and that this is tight against the wall here you want to make sure that this gap is even here all right so that's all nice and tight and now that that so you can see that my tub spout is supported now now we can get some screws into our blocking, centering our valve. Okay, so that's nice and anchored now too. Okay. So, there you go. So now we can go ahead and put our faucet in and you'll be ready to take a shower in here. So this is definitely a very user-friendly system if you're really trying to get something done quick and get your family back into working order here. So I definitely recommend this. This is a really nice solid system. I'm really excited to finish this off.
Okay, so just make sure that your shutoffs valves are pointed in towards the valve. And this truly is <laughs> one of the simplest installs you ever have to do. And then we just slide this guy. Okay, so you see this rubber gasket on it? Hot on the left, cool on the right. And this essentially just slides onto the valve. Okay, so that's seriously all there is to it. I'm gonna be out at a max of two and three quarter and a minimum of two and a half. Sand this up a little bit. Deep bar it. So this is a pretty important aspect here is to seal around the pipe. This guy just has a little set screw on it. About as easy as it gets. We'll connect the rest after we get the tile up. Yeah. It was super easy. I think it's the fastest you've ever done. Yeah. Well, I really hope this video has helped you out and gave you some guidance on how to install a colder tub and shower surround. Now, there are many different models of this type of tub that are a little less expensive and have different features to them. So be sure to check them out. The ones that have grab bars, like the one I'm gonna, I'll be putting that in a little bit later, uh, but they do have uh, tub surrounds that already have the blocking incorporated for the towel bars. It does cost a little bit more for that, but you can check out all the different things that Sterling has at uh, KohlerSterling.com. Uh, definitely check it out. I really highly recommend this kit. I thought it was really easy to install. And as you can see, I put tile around it and it really sprucings it up and it really made it a nice DIY friendly thing. So leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts of this renovation. Uh, ultimately, this is just really the way to save a lot of labor by putting a tub surround like this in. And also, it's really easy to clean, which I think is a win-win for everyone. So thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.